One of the things that you also hit on in your case study, it was sort of like, it was funny. It was like thrown on there as a, as like, oh yeah. And by the way, once we had w stuff working, we knew, we knew which ads were working. We knew how we scaled. We knew this product, people loved it. You, you started to make some influencer deals at that time. And you kind of threw that oh, in yeah. there. Is that is that your is that basically where you see influencer marketing fitting into the into the ecom journey? Is like you really you sort of like you run your ads, you know, you figure out what works, and then it gives you that amazing you like lead in to go to someone like an influencer to help scale it. For sure, I think it depends on your thought process of like what scale is. So we we engage with influencers, and I know Greta does an unbelievable job about speaking on this. So I'll let her go the nitty gritty on it. But way the way we look at influencers, and I had a conversation today with a brand who corrected me as I was seeing why we like influencers, she goes, oh, we don't pay for posts. Like, no, it's okay. We're not, we're not here to pay for posts. We're here to access their audience, right? Because all we're thinking about is scale. Yeah. So yeah. we're thinking about scale. We're not thinking about the incremental dollars we have to pay for them to post on their page because a brand's going to go, nah, that's, they love us enough to want to post about us. Of course, everybody loves your brand. Your brand's the best. But what we want is another audience that – is technically you're buying a warm audience because that influencer is going to speak to the people that follow him or her. So when we access an audience or an influencer, we're using it as a, a, a way to run ads through that. And people do this all the time because CPMs consistently for influencers are much cheaper because it's more, A, it's more authentic coming from uh, indiv individual speaking on behalf of a brand. So this is great, get it, versus a brand going, I am great, come get me. Nice. Do you ever build the influencer into the funnel as well? Like, I guess that would be, that's an, you know, cause I'm just thinking of influencers being the start of the funnel, basically. Um, have you ever built anything where then the influencer is then a deeper part of the funnel as well? Like on the landing page, for instance, in order to create continuity, I guess you'd have to make sure that it would really depend on the brand, I guess, in that case. No, I think you're absolutely correct. There's multiple ways of introducing uh, influencer at the part of the funnel. So something we've been dabbling on, we haven't been able to execute it yet because it is a large undertaking plus long contract. Because usually the deals that we make are, I'll talk deeper about this like kind of when I get on stage in Barcelona, but you, you ink a deal, it's for a piece of content for a duration of time, um, and then you get, you either doing a rev share or you're doing some sort of um, straight up payment and they just give you access and they shut it off. But getting access to them to actually be on your lander that's a huge, that's now a digital asset that we have to pay tremendous dollars for. Mm. So we only like to kind of use an influencer, whether they're introducing a brand or they're going to then be sold with a product on white or a lifestyle image. And then again, back down to like a DPA. But there's also times where we'll hit huge, great brand piece, solidify that with an influencer because the way people buy is for two reasons. One, the price of it and two, a recommendation from someone they trust. And then after, as soon as they get after this, then they're seeing some very simple product specific elements. Nice. So incorporating that throughout the, the whole, like, sorry, in a dynamic fashion, depending on where they came from. Yeah. Because think about it. I don't care what got them. Like it, it's a math equation. I don't care what got them to my site or how they did it. Like as long as it's cost effective and then AOV backs out. So that means I need to show them influencer, influencer to product on white, product on white, and then they buy, or it's just influencer to buy. I'm going to have to figure that out, and that's a constant, like, I guess that would be a really exciting thing to consistently do, which we do on a daily basis, is understanding what is that initial entry point, and then what do they show them next for them to buy. The thing I hear people talking a lot about is how to entice people, how to get these, get, get on their radar. Like, it's going to help, I guess, it's, you know, coming from someone that looks like a polished agency, that's going to help. So, you know, like what are the, like, one of the guys in our group was talking about how he's reached out to dozens of influencers and no one, no one gets back to him. Do you have, do you have any tips for people just to like, to get their foot in the door as more and more people leverage this to like stand apart? Oh, sending product straight up. Like as soon as you realize like, okay, I need this person to be a part of my brand. You are sending product because you can afford to give up a piece of something that's already created. And then for them to actually genuinely be about it, because here's what could happen when we've yeah. seen it happen before is as soon as they get the product and like, oh my God, this is amazing. They're going to do posts by themselves, yeah. right? So if you get them out there and then you contact, hey, did you get my product? It's a much easier way in rather than just pestering them because you know they're getting messages left and right. Yeah, and that, yeah, everyone likes getting stuff in the mail, no doubt. Amazon, all nice. day. Oh, you should see my house. It's a parade. It's ridiculous. Um, 
But, okay, cool. So now I'll just put you on the spot one last time. Do you care about the World Cup? You're a former professional soccer goaltender. Do you care about the World yep. Cup? And and I'm who knows when this is going out here, but I want to see some prediction. I want to hear a prediction. Okay. So my short answer is yes, I care about the World Cup. I have to. That's my duty as a 